What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house. A couple of cards have dropped tonight, and they really excite me in terms of card design, gameplay, and where the game is going, even competitively, especially with the Witchcraft Monster. So let's just go ahead and jump into it, starting with Outrigger Expand. Expand Dong, happening fast. So this is actually something that I really enjoy in cards with the first effect here. It's a continuous spell, so it stays face up. Machine X these monsters you control cannot be targeted by an opponent's card effect. I call this a bonus effect because guess what? It wasn't needed for what it did, but it offers a little bit of extra armor for an archetype that's already struggling, and I really like to see this in cards that are meant to do something else because this card is clearly meant to transition you up and power you up. So, once per turn, you can target an infinite ignition Xyz monster you control, special summon from your extra deck one machine machine Xyz monster that is two ranks higher than that monster you control by using it as an Xyz material. This special summon is treated as an Xyz summon, also transfer the materials to the summoned monster. Now there's a cost for this. You cannot special summon monsters except earth machine monsters for the rest of the turn after you activated this effect. So even if you're not playing the Tonka toys aka infinite ignition pure, you can kind of stack your turn and then play this after and use that effect. So it allows you to play as you would like. The, all Everything in this card design, all of it is really awesome to me. It allows you to play other archetypes or other engines within your deck, allows you to end and then rank up, and then offers protection besides just the ability. And it's kind of cute because that protection, it's not super insane. It's just an extra layer, and that's what I truly enjoy. It doesn't make it just OP, crazy, broken. It adds a layer that is nice to see. It makes them maybe have to deal with this card and then your other card. It dictates how their turn is going to end up after it already dictated how your turn would end up by the restrictions placed in it. I just think all of this yin and yang to this card is really freaking cool. I, I love card design like this and I couldn't be happier to see Infinite Ignition get it, but I don't think it's enough to bring them to the forefront of competitive play. I just really like it. Next on the list is our new Ankaribo or is it Ank Kribo? It's a play on the Monster Reborn words because that's the Ank. Ank. Dark Fiend effect, level 1, 300 slash 200. You can only use this card's name's first and second effects once per turn each. Notice the little Monster Reborn on its forehead. It's like an ancient Egyptian Kribo. It's so cute. It's my favorite art since the PCY Kribo, and it even mimics it with all the Reborns floating around. Let's just get into the effect. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can discard this card, then target one monster in either graveyard except this card. Special summon that monster to your field, but send it to the graveyard during the end phase. So it's pretty much restricted on this effect to your opponent's turn because it's to their attacks. Unless you're somehow forcing your opponent to attack you during your turn, I don't know if that exists in game design. Anyways, my point being, it doesn't negate the monster's effects that you're bringing back, so if they have a quick effect like Prank Tops, ooh, ooh, it's getting a little hot and spicy in here, the applications within the meta it could actually have, but I don't like that it is restricted to the battle phase of your opponents for this effect. If they're setting up negates, that kind of stuff, Boral Savage, it's not looking so hot for our buddy competitively. And the second effect leaves the restriction that I don't necessarily enjoy. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard. Well, actually, I thought this might be by opponents, but it's actually by any. So this does go somewhere. You can pop this yourself. That I actually really do like. These cards tonight really are coming out great. You can activate this effect during this turn's end phase, add a monster reborn from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So if they realize reborn is limited at one and they allow you to recur reborn, reborn the reborn from your graveyard to your hand, but they also make you wait a turn in modern Yu-Gi-Oh standards. 
this may not make it, but I truly do like the card design in terms of, hey, you can choose to destroy it by your own effects, or you can ram it for battle and get this effect. Also, it has a hand trap effect that's cute. I don't think this will see competitive play. It's a V-Jump promo, so no clue when we'll get it here in the TCG. But overall, the crafting, creating, and uh, how they put this card together art-wise too. I love everything about it. I, I'm not looking for some OP hand traps anymore. I've had enough of those. Next up, the Witchcraft. This is where the competitive layer starts to build. Witchcraft, how, how am I going to say this? Pottery? Pottery. That makes a lot of sense comp considering what's happening. Witchcraft Pottery. Let's go ahead and get into those effects. And thanks for subbing, uh, Wesley. Witchcraft Pottery is an Earth Spellcaster effect monster, level 2, 0 slash 2000, and confirmed something for us. You can only use this card's first and second effects once per turn each. Turns out, most of the Witchcraft are going to have this effect. During the main phase, quick effect, you can tribute this card and discard a spell. Special summon a Witchcraft monster from your deck, except Witchcraft Pottery. This is pretty darn good for all of them to be lone fires just at the cost of themselves in a spell now yes if you eat your normal summon and you get ash blossom yikers island awaits you and you're gonna spend a while there but it's kind of cool that the entire archetype gets this and then we get something that melds with other witchcrafts i've noticed if you have no cards in your hand you can banish this card from your graveyard. So we're getting the graveyard resources. You see where this is going? Then target one witchcraft card in your graveyard. Add that card to your hand. This is freaking nice. This means past your graveyard resources, past playing your turn, you get something back later for you to continue perhaps up a tree or loading your graveyard. This sounds like you're about to go through a chain of events through searching out. You can, like, get this out, end up tributing it, have it as a graveyard resource for later, and we're going places. Now, I don't think I uh, ended up reviewing uh, this witchcraft because I was waiting for more. So, we've got Ver... Witchcraft Master Vare, so perhaps the boss monster, and she gets big. She's a light spellcaster slash effect level 8, 1,2800, and it's going to play into the card design of our new potter here. So, during damage calculation, when a spellcaster monster you control battles an opponent's monster. You can reveal any number of spell cards with different names from your hand, and if you do, that monster you control gains 1,000 attack and defense for each card revealed. So, remember, you're getting a spell back with that other card. That's at 2,000 already, but just 2,000. Yikes. Second effect, quick effect. You can discard a spell, negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent currently controls until the end of this turn. Until the end of this turn, but currently controls. So there's some give and take there. She is actually insane in terms of card design, but do you see where it mixes in? You can actually play through your hand, play through what you're going for, and guarantee a resource back at the end of it, and it feels like this is meant to be in a chain, responsive chain of events with how the deck is going. Our original uh, monster revealed, which is why I say the Lone Fire effect is already there. I was seeing other people say, oh man, they got a Lone Fire. Well, our first revealed is Schmitta, and she shares the effect that during either player's main phase, you contribute this card, then discard a spell card from your hand, special summon a witchcraft monster from your deck, except for Schmitta. During either player's main phase wait did, did that have yeah they're quick effects all right they just didn't have to put quick effect in here either to clarify but both of them being quick effect lone fires at the cost of that in a spell are pretty dang cool but so far i'm not seeing anything that allows you to bypass that uh normal summon so getting ash blossom again just so insane if this becomes meta also you can banish this card from your graveyard very similar graveyard resources send a witchcraft card from your deck to the graveyard except for schmidt so she can foolish any witchcraft card for within which you can target a witchcraft card, not just necessarily a spell. I'm waiting for the witchcraft spells here. I think it's obvious that it's going to happen, but you see the line is starting to continue to where now it's becoming worth it to expend your resources to go through your deck using these and it's almost like reverse dangers in a weird way like a gra you want them in your graveyard to start getting your pluses and they're going to summon themselves out of deck instead of hand at the cost of one so you you get your card back later than immediately where dangers do give them it's this interesting different card design very similar right but instead it's locked more within its archetype 
which feels like what dangers maybe should have been and then comes from the grave now a lot of you might think that's a stretch john you're comparing them to dangers they're insane they're taking over the meta think about it just think about it these cards in the graveyard banish and then start doing something they get their extra effect already there and then they turbo each other out of the deck to continue piling them into the graveyard that's pretty dang cool to me and it does feel somewhat similar in card design where jackalope and nessie start to get the others of the archetype you see and then other ones have different effects and you end up leaving some Ooh, isn't that actually a little similar in card design so my my mind's just flowing in card design let me know if i'm crazy for comparing them to danger i don't think so i think it's actually somewhat comparable in how it goes but in a much different route by resourcing the graveyard and then taking longer to give you the stuff back but what do you guys think of all the cards tonight the witchcraft the karibo and ooh, outrigger are you guys a little more excited for your tonka toys in Yu-Gi-Oh? let me know in the comment section below subscribe if you haven't already give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy the conversation and back me on patreon if you enjoy my content thank you so much for watching